All right, welcome back everybody. Exercise 8.2, a certain corporation is interested in determining whether a relationship exists between commuting time and its of its employees and the level of stress related problems uh, observed at, on the job. Isn't that quite interesting? I think that's quite an interesting problem. So they want to see whether commuting time is related to the uh, to, to stress related problems. So a study of 123, okay, here is 123. A study of 123 employees reviews the following, all right? So here we have the commuting time and you can see the commuting time is a categorical variable here. It's under 15 minutes, 15 minutes to 45 minutes, over 45 minutes. So you can see already that R is equal to three, okay? That's what you should look at when you're dealing, the, dealing with these kind of questions, okay? And of course we know that R minus one is therefore equal to three minus one which is equal to two. Of course, someone might be asking, why are you doing that? That is going to be important for the degrees of freedom, you remember. So of course, we see the stress level as well is a categorical variable. Also, C is equal to three, and C minus one is, um, is equal to uh, three minus one, which is equal to two again. So of course, the degrees of freedom here will notice that it is going to be um, two times two, and that is going to be four. Isn't that beautiful? Already, you can see where we're trying to get to. All right, so let's... Um, do the test uh, that is required. Test the hypothesis at 5% level of significance. So we want to test the hypothesis at 5% level of significance. Of course, we need to round off intermediate, we're told that here yeah, in this case, round off all intermediate and final uh, calculations to three decimal places, okay? So it's, it's, it's always good to only round uh, off intermediate answers if the examiner tells you to do that. All right, so um, then of course, uh, the first step is always the now and the alternative hypothesis. So what is the now hypothesis in this case? Commuting time and stress levels are unrelated or are not dependent, okay? They're independent, all right? Uh, that would be the now hypothesis. Can you see that we are always specifying the now and the alternative in terms of the actual variables we're dealing with. We don't say variable one and variable two. Uh, we need to specify what variable one is, what variable two is. And of course, the alternative hypothesis is that time and stress levels are related, okay? Uh, or they are dependent or they're associated, all right? So what is going to be the critical value? The critical value is going to be based on the degrees of freedom. So we already we can see degrees of freedom is equal to four. We also saw that in the previous, on the previous slide. And uh, now we're saying if you draw uh, your chi-square like that, so that's, poor, that's a poor chi-square uh, diagram, but let's try and do it better. All right, so um, of course this is a zero. We're saying uh, we're dealing with a chi-square with four degrees of freedom here. And we're looking for, the value which cuts off uh, uh, an area of alpha is equal to 0 0.05 over here. So at four degrees of freedom. So this is what we're talking about. I'll show you this again. So uh, let me just clean up here. I think it will help if we clean up here a bit. Um, so we're talking about four degrees of freedom. Four degrees of freedom, here we are. And um, our alpha is 5%. So if our alpha is 5%, we're talking about that value there. Of course, we're dealing with 9. 9.488, 9.488, all right? And this is the value we're talking about. Isn't that beautiful? All right, 9.488. All right, so this course is not as hectic as people put it, I think. We are, this is the last part, this is the last bit of it. Can you, can you believe? So now we need to calculate the test statistic. All right, so the test statistic, of course, is based on expected and observed frequencies. So we already have the observed frequencies. We're saying that's an observed, 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 observed frequency, observed frequency. So we now need to calculate the expected, but in this case, we, we, the other expected frequencies were given for us. The only ones that were not given is this one here and this one here. You should be able to calculate these values. And how do you do that? Remember that expected frequency is always the row total multiplied by the column. We actually derived this formula, isn't that beautiful? Column total uh, divided by the sample um, size, all right, divided by the sample size. So essentially we're saying E11, which is this value here, this value here is going to be, was this in the first row and the first column. So it will be E11. So E11 is equal to, the total of the first row times the total of the second row 
sorry, uh, the first total of the first row and the total of the first column. And of course, you should always divide by 123 here. And that is what takes us to, let me just verify. I think it's um, 35 times 45 divided by 123. And that is what gives us 12.805, okay? We're rounding to three decimal places as we talk. The E21 is nothing but 53 multiplied by 45. I, I hope you guys can see where I'm getting these values. Okay, let's go and see where we're getting the values, all right? For E21, we're talking about E21. So here is the row total, here's a column total. So it's 53 times 45 divided by the sample size, which is 123, all right? And this is how we get to uh, this part here. And the value is 19.3. Nine zero. I hope everyone can see what we're doing here. This is very important. All right. So um, um, let's just verify some of the values. Okay. Just for argument's sake, let's verify this value here. So it's the second row and the second column. So this is E two two. Okay. So what is the second? What is the total of the second row? Total of the second row is fifty three. What is the total of the second column? Is twenty two now. Okay. So fifty three times twenty two divided by one twenty three. We're saying 53 times 22 divided by 123. Let me just verify this. 53 times 22 divided by 123. That gives us 9.480. Yes, 9.480. And that's beautiful. 9.480. Rounded to the three decimal places. All right. So you can verify the other ones. I think that's good homework. Um, you can verify the other ones. All right. So having said all this, we're saying we can now get to the test statistic. And the test statistic is always calculated using that formula there. And of course, for the first cell, we're saying it will be 10 minus 12.805. Um, 10 minus 12.805 squared divided by 12.805. And for that, for this cell here, it will be um, 6 minus 6. Point, I think I'll just talk, talk, talk you through everything. Um, I think that's the order we're using this. So here it will be six minus six point two um, uh, six zero squared divided by six point two six zero. Okay, and here it will be nineteen minus fifteen point nine three five squared divided by fifteen point nine three five, and here it will be fifteen minus nineteen point three six zero squared divided by nineteen point three six zero. Here it will be nine minus Eight, so nine minus um, nine minus nine four eight zero squared divided by nine point four eight zero. Here it will be twenty nine minus twenty four point one three zero squared divided by twenty four point one three zero. Here it will be twenty minus twelve point eight zero five squared divided by twelve point eight zero five. Isn't that beautiful? Here it will be seven minus six point six. Two, sorry, 6.260 uh, squared divided by 6.260. And the last one will be 8 minus 15.935 squared divided by 15.935. All right. So, and having done everything correctly, you should get to this value of 11.297. And that is our test statistic. So if our test, test statistic is 11.297, we're basically saying then that uh, it falls within the rejection region. Because our critical value was 9.488, you remember. Our critical value was 9.488, where are we? We're over here, this is our critical value. So our critical value, because it's 9.488 and that test statistic is 11.297, we're basically saying that it falls inside the rejection region and we reject X0 in favor of H1. This is what we're talking about. We reject X0 in favor of H1, okay? And what is the conclusion going to be at the 5% level of significance, there's sufficient evidence to support H1. It's always in terms of H1, even the decision is in terms of X0. That commuting time is related to the level of stress. Isn't that beautiful? All right, so this brings us to the end of um, this exercise here. And um, in the next video, I will talk about p-values. That could be the last video actually, uh, how to use p-values to um, 
do chi-squared tests, all right? Like we did for the other tests. We first use the five stages or the five steps. Then we get to, we'll go to the point of using um, the p-values. And this is exactly what we're going to do um, in exercise 3.4, uh, 8.3. Um, uh, uh, there could be another exercise again, 8.4, I think would be the last exercise. Okay, so uh, I think it's just one more video remaining here. I'm going to make one video uh, for the remaining part. Thanks so much.